Today's video is sponsored by me, Jason Akers. I know a lot of YouTubers and content creators are placing ad breaks in their videos these days in order to make ends meet. And I understand why, but all my videos are created by me, paid for by me. I buy my own cameras, editing software, microphones. I spend hours of time recording and editing the videos for you, my audience. I don't like a lot of self-promotion, but I wanted to take the time to let you know about the ways you can help support the videos and my content. I have a large list of links in every description of every video I provide you with. All of the pesticides I use in my business are listed on my Amazon page. When I started my business, I used Amazon a lot in order to receive my chemicals and equipment the next day delivery. It's a service that I trust. So I list pesticides there for you to find. I also have several affiliate links listed for B&G products and pesticides as well. My course on bed bugs is the number one course on Udemy's website that goes over extensive treatment methods on the control of bed bugs, from automobile treatment to living room and even bedrooms as well. If you have checked all of those links and still wish to support me, I have a PayPal, Patreon, and other ways to donate to the channel in the links on my main page of YouTube, as well as in the description of every one of my videos. As always, the best way to support me at what means the most to me is if you will like this video, if you will share this video with your friends, and if you will subscribe to my channel. That honestly means the most to me, and that's what keeps me going, truly. More than money, more than anything else, is just keeping you guys happy and keeping you with the content that you like to have. Speaking of subscribing, uh, I also have a join button at the top of my YouTube channel as well. This feature is new with YouTube and works in much the same way as a Twitch subscription works. When you hit this button and join the channel, it gives you special features that only joining the channel can give. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section below giving me any suggestions you might have for the next video. So don't forget, like and subscribe, and on with the show. Oh, hey everybody. How y'all doing tonight? Live on the YouTube. Is my camera gonna focus or is it gonna get all fuzzy? Sorry about that everybody. Hope everybody's having a good night. What's everybody planning for the weekend? Weekend, just a couple days. Just, 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 just right around the corner. Right around the corner. Hey, everybody. I shaved my face. I don't have no hair. And I want to warn. If my stream ends abruptly, it's because my power went out. We have an extremely horrible storm going on outside. They got tornado watch until like what? Tonight at midnight sometime sometime. Lightning and thundering and scary and you don't want to go walking your dog tonight, that's for sure. So we may we may we may be uh we may be losing power. I don't know. Sometimes you would lose power. I'm, 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 I grew up very rural, and so uh, usually if the wind just went, whew, you'd lose power for a week. So I kind of just accepted that if we have a storm, we're probably going to lose power. But if we don't lose power, it's fantastic. So there you go. <laughs> don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't you lived, so you lived worse than I did. You lived up in the hillbilly area. You had a spot where if they lost power, you didn't. You had to get out the hamster generator. Yeah. Yeah, if we lost power, we had oil lamps, and we had a wood stove. Generator? We did not have a generator. Mm. We we're not that wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brad. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you. Always here. I really need to clean my desk. My desk is awful. My desk is a catch-all for toys. Why is this toy on? This isn't broken. Why is this on my desk? I have no clue. 
I thought kids put toys on my desk because they broke. Usually they do. Let me see what I got. I got a... Well, I don't really have any toys on my desk right now. I think the last toy that got put on my desk, I told Charlie I wasn't going to fix it again. He keeps breaking it. What is this? Let's go turn this off. There we go. Oh. So thankful for you, Jason, and the work you do. All of your viewers appreciate you. So a lot of them do. There's some that don't. <laughs> and they let me know in the comments. They let me know in the comments section. So. Oh. There was something I want to talk about. Now I can't remember what it was. I have the phone lines up today. I realized two weeks in a row. Well, all right. First, let me talk about what happened last week. Because I did have somebody bring it up already, wondering what had happened. And I want to explain what happened last week. So, um, we were sick. We had a really, really bad, bad stomach bug that went through the house. Uh, my two youngest, the two-year-old and the five-year-old, and the 11-year-old, actually, all three caught a throwing up stomach bug all in one night. So me and my wife did shifts. So she, I slept, and then luckily I didn't have work the next day, or my son, my oldest actually went out and worked that day. He did all the work, so I could stay home because I didn't get any sleep. I got maybe three to five hours in the first night, and then, uh, when 7, 7.30 rolled around, my wife came and said, please, can you switch with me? I haven't slept at all. So, and I got up, and I watched the babies and stuff and took care of everybody. <sighs> Excuse me. Took care of everybody until she was able to get some sleep, and then she got up, and then I took a nap on the couch, and it was just like, oh, it was just, it was awful. And then, uh, Rory, my oldest, he was out working one day, and he threw up outside, so he got sick. He had to come home. And then Alicia, my wife, she got sick, I think, either that night or the next day, and she was throwing up. And then I got sick last, and then I was throwing up. And I usually don't throw up at all. But when I get sick, and it was, oh, it was freaking awful. So we were all sick. So I did not, I could not get on the live stream last week at all. I was going on no sleep, just miserable. So, but we're done with that. We got that over with. Hopefully I won't catch another stomach flu in 14 years. We'll see how it goes. I hate stomach flu. I'm a wimp. I am a wimp when it comes to colds. Uh, I, my wife says I get the man flu no matter oh, do, what so it is. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Charlie's a little man. It makes sense. But, or Charlie gets the man flu. Yeah, me and Charlie get the man flu. That's right. That's right. I did lose some weight. Lost two pounds. So, take advantage of them stomach bugs. You get to throwing up, but lose some weight. <laughs> so, <sighs> tired. Oh, it took me a little while to get on tonight. Babies, I was up there with the babies. My youngest, my two-year-old, likes to sit in his bed and take his little stuffed animals and talk to them. And I have to keep telling him, Finley, go to bed. Because the thing is, if I don't wait until he's almost asleep to leave, he will get up and smack the five-year-old in the face and wake Charlie up. And so I have to wait until he's almost asleep, and then I can get up. Because the two-year-old and the five-year-old share a bedroom. And, in fact, the two-year-old gets up in the morning and wakes up the five-year-old by smacking him in the face. He says, wake up, Charlie. So, me and my two-year-old caught it earlier last year. It was awful. Uh, had to change his sheets. Oh, yes, we were changing sheets. My wife has one of them mean green machines cleaner things she had to, the couch so my wife this is before I got up so this was like between the hours of like 6 and 7 30 in the morning maybe 5 30 to 7 30 in the morning somewhere around there I don't know I was asleep 
But she says, so, so Finley was good. He threw up in his bed a little bit. He got up, and then he was fine. He was watching Bluey or something on TV, Bob the Builder or something. He was watching on TV. And so my wife heard my five-year-old get up. So my five-year-old had been throwing up all night to the point where he fell asleep on the toilet because he didn't trust if he was going to poop himself or if he was going to throw up. So he was sitting on the toilet falling asleep. And so my wife finally, he gets up, he goes, he lays in the bed. My wife says, okay, he's good. Well, then Finley's throwing up, my two-year-old. So then she goes, gets him, takes him down to the couch, watch the TV with him. She hears Charlie jump up, run to the bathroom, and now he's barfing, throwing up all over the floor and, you know, all over again. And so she goes upstairs. And no sooner than she got upstairs to take care of the five-year-old, the two-year-old on the couch starts whimpering and crying. He vomits all over the couch. Makes a spot, like, huge all over the couch. So she had to get her steam cleaner, green, green machine thing with all the shampoo and stuff, and go down there, and she had to clean the couch with the shampoo machine. Oh. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. And so we were doing all the sheets, had to wash all the sheets. All the beds had to be washed. And then, to make matters worse, after Finley had gotten well, two days later, he decided during nap time that he was going to take his diaper off and proceeds to pee everywhere, all over his bed. I mean, he's just peeing awake, not asleep. He's awake just because he wants to watch himself pee all over the bed. So he, he's got really clean sheets. I mean, they're really clean. They've been cleaned for like three times in one week. He Definitely very, very clean sheets for my two-year-old. Because, you know, he's at that age right now where he's like, he knows how to take his diaper off. And he will take his diaper off. So, oh. Oh, you're talking about the kid's taking his diaper off? I was talking about how he vomited all over the bed right after we... So we, we cleaned their sheets over the weekend. We cleaned their sheets. And then they got sick. Like the night that the clean sheets got put on the bed, they got sick that same night. So then they threw up... Both kids threw up in the bed. So they had to have their sheets cleaned. And by the time... And then Finley, two days later, decided that he was going to take his diaper off and pee all over fresh, clean sheets. Like, oh, these are fresh sheets. I'm just going to pee all over them. I'm just going to pee on them. I mean, I'm just like, oh, my children, my children. So, anyway, anybody want to talk about bugs? We're here to talk about bugs, not what bugs me. <laughs> If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Sorry I wasn't here last week. I'm here now. Answer your questions about bugs. Actually, I was going to look up some comments because there were some comments I hadn't gotten to yet, and I wanted to. <clears throat> oh. I'm so mad at myself. I just did the crossfire treatment today, but I forgot to shake it when I mixed it. Does this mean it won't work or worse be harmful? No, it will not be harmful to you, and it probably will still work. If you poured it in the water, it probably will still work. The only thing to do is to just see what happens. You know, if you've treated your house already and you haven't, like, shaken your tank up or whatever, then you, the best thing I can say, I mean, I wouldn't go and buy it and immediately retreat right now. I'd give it, you know, three or four weeks, see what happens. If you still have bed bugs, treat again and then just mix it right next time. That's what I would do. That was a question that came in on one of my videos uh, actually uh, yesterday. So I wanted to answer that. Actually, I'm going to type in here. Let me answer that question. 
if I can. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, I would wait and see if you still have bugs net, uh, in a, like maybe four weeks or so, treat again. There we go. I'm working on replying to comments while I'm talking to chat. Because <laughs> I don't have time to do this. Not this time of year. I work all the time. Let's see. I have five bedrooms total in my house, three being upstairs. One of my roommates just found bed bugs in his room this week. Have not seen any in the others. Do we treat his room? Or do we have to treat the whole house? So let's answer that question. Gotta refresh. Do, 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 do. I would treat the whole house because you never know where the bugs have spread to. They can hitch. A, oh, a ride on your clothes or shoes. There you go. And there we answered that one. Let's see. Chat says, um, thanks for putting, thanks for putting out the YouTube videos. They have not only helped, but also gave me peace of mind. Good. I'm glad. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, Jay says, I have a problem with fleas. I've used this spray already you made up. I can't seem to get the fleas always after four months. What kind of spray have you used, Mr. Jay? I'm assuming it's a Mr. Maybe it's a Mrs. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to do a video about that one. Michael, read that comment. Um, people recommending stuff that doesn't work. So, anyway. Not a lot of comments. Alpine WSG. What can be done about not being able to afford treating a whole house? You should be able to afford to treat a whole house. If you can afford to buy one bottle of Crossfire, then you have enough chemical to treat your whole house. That's all you need is one bottle. Let me show you. Let's see. Alright. Let's see if this works because I was tell, t t t fiddling around with this thing earlier. Alright. So let me explain to you the areas that you're going to treat when you treat with Crossfire. Okay. People don't understand. I've got videos showing how to do this. Okay. Let me show you. When treating with Crossfire, first, baseboards. Now, this goes under, I'm, I'm going to put a checklist here. And I'm going to, I'm assuming you know what these places are without having to explain. But if you don't, please ask. There's no stupid question in this chat room. Unless, how do I apply pesticide to my body? That's a stupid question. Don't do that. But, this is, these are areas you should target when using Crossfire. And let me explain. No other areas do you need to treat. Okay? So, if you can afford one bottle of Crossfire, one bottle of Crossfire will mix one gallon of finished solution, which should be enough to do an entire house. I use one 13-ounce bottle of Crossfire, and I could treat three or four houses with that, okay? 
and I'm going to explain the areas that you need to treat. Don't over apply the pesticide. You don't need to use that much, okay? Once you've mixed your chemical, you're going to treat baseboards, okay? Baseboards, crown molding. If you have crown molding, treat the crown molding, which is on, around the top of the ceiling, okay? Beds. And when I say beds, I mean all parts of the bed. Not the sheets, not the covers, not the comforters, okay? Just the mattress, box spring, headboard, footboard, bed rails, okay? The bed, the bed itself, the furniture, okay? That, then you want to treat the uh, sofa. Sofa, uh, recliners, I usually tell people lazy boy to give people an idea. All right, a recliner, a sofa, a love seat. Uh, pull out sofa. Okay? That's it, you're done. You're done. That's it. It's really easy. Okay? Don't. Don't treat carpets. Don't treat carpets, walls, ceilings. Don't do that. You don't have to do that. Don't do that. If you do that, you won't have enough chemical. Don't treat carpets. Don't treat the walls. Don't treat the ceilings. Treat only baseboards, crown molding, bed, sofa, recliners, love seats, pull out sofas. That's basically it. That's all you have to treat. That's all. Okay? The reason being is bed bugs don't live in the carpets. They don't live on the walls. And they don't live on the ceiling. They don't live there. I don't care what you've seen a bed bug do. They don't live there. Okay? Just because you get up in the morning and you go to work, it does not mean you live at work. Just because you get up in the morning and you go to the grocery store doesn't mean you live at the grocery store. Just because you see a bed bug walking across the floor, it does not mean it lives on the floor. It means it is on its way commuting back and forth to an area. These are the places that you treat. This is with Crossfire, okay? This is with Crossfire. Let me show you. Let me get a picture. Can I paste it? Is it going to paste? Didn't work. What the world? There we go. Crossfire. Okay, that's kind of a misshapen picture a little bit. Okay, that's with Crossfire. That's the chemical. Okay, that's the pesticide. No, you don't treat electrical outlets with Crossfire. You don't do that. Okay, these are the areas that you have to spray. I don't spray electrical outlets. I mean, that would cause a house to burn down or electrical short. It's not a good idea. Water and electricity doesn't mix. Don't do that. Okay, so I drew this box thinking I would just do an outline of the house. Because that's what I was going to do. So basically... Um, You've got, you go in through the front door and you have like a living room. Let's say you got a living room and it, let's say it's an open concept. All right. Let's have the living room and the kitchen, dining room and all is one big, huge room. All right. There's that room. And then you have a hallway that goes down here this way. And then you have, let's say a bedroom here. And let's say a bedroom here maybe a Jack and Jill bathroom in between, and a bedroom here, and maybe like a stairwell down to a basement, maybe right there, and maybe like a linen closet, okay? There's your, there's your setup. I mean, I've been in houses that are floor plan just like this, okay? You have a bed, 
in a room, you have a bed in a room, you got maybe a master bed in this room, and maybe a nightstand, maybe a dresser, and maybe a dresser here, and a dresser here. You get the idea, okay? And then in your kitchen, in your living room, you got the sofa here. You'll have a, let's say, a dining room table, and maybe you've got your kitchen over here, okay? Basic, very basic setup, all right? If you treat this house, all right, the areas you're going to treat, or I've been in a lot of houses, Abby. <laughs> I've been in a lot of houses, <laughs> thousands of houses in uh, 35 years. All right, so you're going to treat the baseboards, okay? Baseboards. You see? How much chemical do you honestly think it's going to take to treat the perimeter of your house? The perimeter of the walls of your house. Not much. It doesn't take much. And see, this cabinet's in the way. So you can't treat behind a cabinet. That's like a kitchen cabinet. All right, but you do treat the kick plate on the bottom where it touches the floor. That's like the baseboard. Okay, these are the areas I treat. If I go in the house, these are the places I spray. All right, just like that. Okay, there's one big room. That's all. All those baseboards. Okay, then you're gonna treat the baseboards in the bedrooms. Basically, anywhere you see a black line interior walls all get treated just the baseboards that's all and if there's a piece of furniture in the way don't sweat it it's not gonna matter it really isn't people people think too much it doesn't take that much thought into this it's pretty easy i like crossfire crossfire is a stupid chemical anybody can use it it's real simple okay if i could use it you can use it all right but basically all the baseboards and i and yeah i'm including the baseboards in the bathroom too all right if you miss an inch here or there, or even three feet of space on a baseboard, it doesn't matter, okay? It's a non-repellent chemical, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that you treat your mattresses and box springs, your headboard, footboard, and bed rails of all of your beds. These X's are, are you know, beds. And so, those are, you wanna treat those. You really wanna treat those. You definitely wanna treat your couch. Don't forget to treat the couch. You got to treat the couch. And if you've got like a little lazy boy chair in here, like maybe over here, I'm just going to do it with a red rectangle. That chair, that chair needs to be treated too. Okay? You treat all that stuff. If you treat all that stuff and you give it enough time to work, you're going to kill your bed bugs. Plain and simple. Doesn't use a lot of chemical at all. Very, very easy to do. Do you need a B&G to do it yourself treatment or is there a more affordable way? You could use other sprayers. The problem with other sprayers is that other sprayers tend to leak a lot. Um, I'm working on a new series um, and I'm gonna try uh, new, new tanks. I think I might actually try a name brand this time and give some pointers on which ones work better than others and uh, try to give you a more budget option that isn't Amazon crap. Because honestly, that Amazon video thing that I did, I thought the tanks were just garbage. I, I would never buy one uh, to use in my own business. Uh, one, actually, I do use um, for like my understructures and stuff like that. I actually do use it, but it's not something I would use inside a home. It's not something I would use to spray around baseboards, uh, you know, sofas and stuff where you're trying to avoid spilling it all over the floor and having it drip everywhere. It's just not, they're just not very adequate. And so I'm working on a new series I'm going to put together um, where I actually uh, rank other things that you necessarily may not be able to find on Amazon. Maybe you can, but, um, but anyway, that's, I, I'll, I'll release more info about that when I get more stuff together on it because I still need to work some kinks out on that one. So... So anyway, if you um, if you treat these areas, these baseboards and stuff, be bed bugs do not need water. They get uh, water out of your blood. Um, so what happens is when the bed bugs 
come into this area. Like, you've treated this area with crossfire. All these areas have been treated. So what happens is you, you, you do all this treatment, all right? You leave. You leave. You stay gone for about two to four hours or until the chemicals dry. If you come in and you come up and you come up to this couch, you touch your arm of this couch, you're like, ooh, that's still a little damp. I would leave and maybe stay gone for another couple hours or so. Just make sure it's dry. Come in the house after it's dry. Make the beds. Put your sheets, covers, everything back on the bed. Wash your sheets. Wash your sheets. I'm going to write that up there. Wash your covers. Okay? Wash your covers. Do not put your sheets, your comforters, your pillowcases, do not put that stuff back on your bed until it has been laundered. That is very important. Launder your sheets. All right? Make your bed. Sleep in it. Now, Crossfire, this chemical, right here. Let me see here. Let me get me a little thing here. I'm going to do this. Crossfire, right there. All right? That chemical, it's in the business what we call a non-repellent, meaning it does, bugs don't see it. All right? When a bug walks off, and like, do-do-do, hey, I see that crossfire. No, they don't. They can't see it. They don't know it's there. All right? A lot of the pesticides you buy over the counter at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that, they do see the chemical. They know that it's there. So they want to avoid it. They see you. They smell you. They're like, oh, man, I wish I could get to that delicious human. He's laying on that bed, but he went and sprayed that Walmart stuff, and I can't get to him because it's still effective, and if I walk across it, it might kill me. More than likely it won't because Walmart pesticides are garbage, but the bug doesn't know that. So they stay away from you. So you're sleeping there in the bed after you spray that Walmart crap. And the bug is like, as soon as the chemical's gone, it knows it's gone. It's right there. It bites you. You are not going to starve bed bugs. I have been in houses that were empty for over nine months. And when I came back in the house, there were still live bed bugs in the house. You are not going to starve a bed bug. No matter how much cheap crap you use, you are not going to starve a bed bug. Eventually, they are going to get to you. They are going to bite you. Okay? Crossfire is a chemical bed bugs don't see. So when you spray it, they don't see the chemical. They don't know anything's been done. They are completely out of the loop. So when you lay on that bed that's been treated with crossfire and the bed bugs come out to bite you, they don't know any better. They're like, they can't see the chemical. They blindly walk to feed on the person they love to feed on. They crawl across the chemical and then you just find dead bed bugs. You'll find them under the bed. You'll find them under the sheets. Sometimes you'll find them in the sheets with you, dead, from the residual that they crawled through to get to you. Now, one of the problems with Crossfire, Crossfire only lasts for about four weeks. So if you're still getting bit after about three and a half to four weeks, you're going to want to treat again to catch those stragglers that may not have gotten exposed to the Crossfire yet. So Because the thing about bed bugs is while bed bugs, most of them will die. In fact, they probably will all die. But if you have any stragglers left behind that have not gotten into the chemical, after about a month, they may not die at all. And so that's why I'm saying if you're still getting bit after a month, you need to reapply the exact same thing. Do the exact same thing that I show you here in this picture. And there are people in this chat right now that have had to treat two or three times and then the bed bug stopped. So don't be disheartened. If you get bit in two or three weeks, understand some people it does take two or three applications. It does work. It will get rid of them. It's like sometimes you have to take an extra dose of Tylenol to get the headache to go away, but it'll go away. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, look at it as medicine, okay? Sometimes you need to apply it a couple times to get your, to get your solution, what you're trying to achieve. Whether it's, you know... I mean, if you were to take antibiotics, you typically go on a regimen. You have to take them for a period of so many days before you can get rid of your sickness or whatever it is that's bothering you. With Crossfire, sometimes you need to apply it two or three times. Most people that aren't professionals do need to apply it two or three times because you, you aren't as savvy with the areas you should and should not treat. You may miss a spot. And, and the idea is that when you treat the second time, maybe you'll get that spot. You see what I'm saying? So you may need to treat more than once. 
don't be disheartened. You'll kill you'll kill your bed bugs. Can Alpine be sprayed outside if being used for other bugs? Also, yes, it can. You just want to be very careful over flowering plants because you will kill pollinators with it. I don't recommend that. Uh, in fact, the label even says it on it. If I'll show you. Let's look at the label of Crossfire. Let's see. Let's just bring up my uh, window here. Alpine. WSG. Label. All right. So here's the label. Right on the very second page of the label, it's got it right here. Uh, application restrictions. So exist for this product because of risk to bees and other insect pollinators. Follow application restrictions found in the directions for use to protect pollinators. Okay. Uh, look for the bee hazard icon in the directions for use. So it'll tell you, um, it says direct contact during foliar applications or contact with residues on plant surfaces. Uh, so you want to, you want to try to cause this not to happen because bees and other insect pollinators can be exposed to this pesticide from, and this is the different ways they can be exposed to it. And if you go down here, it actually has, do not apply within aircraft cabins. Do not, oh, I see. Do not apply this product while bees are foraging. So if you see honeybees or something foraging out in your yard, don't apply it. It'll drift down and get on the flowers, kill honeybees. Do not apply this product to plants that are flowering. Do only apply after all flower petals have fallen off because that's what attract the bees to the flower. And you don't, I mean, if you've got a neighbor that's raising honeybees and trying to get honey from honeybees, and then you go and kill all his honeybees because you were, you know, negligent and treated some clover in your yard by mistake, or you were treating a spider web on your house and it drifted and got on your clover and killed honeybees, you would be liable for that. So that's why they're trying to warn you, don't do that. It will kill bees. And if your neighbors are hobbyists, they got honeybees, you'll kill your honeybees. You'll kill your neighbor's honeybees. Tenants have been gone for a month before. I've seen your videos. We put down diatomaceous earth. It seemed to kill the adults. Now seeing two babies in the last week. What are your thoughts? Use crossfire. It'll be better. Vacuum up the uh, DE. DE is not that effective. Um, I know there's a lot of people online that swear it is. They're just liars. I'm sorry. I just say how it is. It's truth. They're not being honest. 20 people are watching right now. Hey, you guys need to like. Brad will tell you. Brad tattle on you. You got to like the channel. He'll point out. He'll say, hey, y'all not liking the channel. Like it. Or like the video. Yeah, that's that's right. Like the video. You should like the channel. You should subscribe if you like the video. You really should subscribe. Actually, you could become a member and get access to some of my really good videos. I have a new series. Actually, it's not a series. It's a course. So for those that don't know, let me show you what I do. Um, let's, let's bring this window back up again. All right. So if you go to this video right now, you go to youtube.com slash green acres PC. All right. There's my channel. You should like the video anyway, but there's, there's the live. You should subscribe. But in addition to, to the subscription, you can join. Okay. You can join the channel. What that does is it's a paid membership. Okay. It supports the channel. That's the main thing that it does. It helps me produce videos like I do where I help people all over the world with their bed bug problems, ant problems, flea problems, cockroaches, all the stuff that I do. Okay? And, and all the explanations that I give people on how to do what I do for a living. And all of the, you know, it's very precise, helpful stuff. All right, like the videos like this, how to get rid of bed bugs, four easy steps. All right, videos like that. That's what it does. It goes to support everything that we do here on the channel. Also, I have added a new category to the subscriptions. I'm going to see if I can show you. Um, let me see. So first, let me show you this. Videos like All right, this is my video you're watching right now. This is the live, okay? It's got the chat and everything on it. And there's Brad saying, please smash that like and show your support for this channel. Yes, you should. I agree. Anyway, if you go here and you click the more, 
under this little window right here and you scroll down, my course for eliminating bed bugs is the very first link. Okay? You can go there. That will take you to Udemy. I've got one of the highest rated bed bug sites, if not the highest, because I've got over 139 ratings. Oh, I've got 139 ratings. That's how many I've got of 523 students. Okay? I've got, it's a very good course. Right now, it's $16. That's what it's telling me. It may tell you something different. Um, but right now, that's if I would click the Add to Cart and bought it right now, that's what I'd pay for it. Okay? Now, if you go to subscribe or join, if you click this Join button right here, and you pay $14.99. It's $14.99. All right? I'm going to show you something. If it'll work. All right. Let's look at my, this is me logged in as me. Okay. This is my bed bug course right here. Hey. This is new. Now this video you can get right now if you go to that playlist. But this video right here is a video that I did for somebody. They let me film the bed bug job. And I put it right here. It's 17 minutes. It shows how to treat a house for bed bugs. All these other videos are available. Y'all can go view them right now. You don't have to join to, be, to watch that video. But this one right here. This video and all content. Treating a living room See? for bed bugs. It's important to treat every piece of major furniture that you would normally sit on. For example, a couch, a love seat, or a lazy boy recliner. In order to treat these pieces of furniture, we need to remove all pillows and personal belongings, newspapers, anything that you wouldn't want to spray with a pesticide. And then what we do is we turn the furniture upside down because we need to treat around the feet, around the legs, and the back of the piece of furniture. I'll just let y'all watch this for a minute. I had two cameras. <laughs> this couch right here specifically has legs that can be removed. If you'll notice, I start to screw it off. If you take these all the way off, sometimes you can actually find bed bugs living around the legs. And if you go further in, I actually find bed bugs. Let me show you this. Now, just like on the other sofa, we want to treat behind this now, pillow right I want to point out here, this is a leather couch. I get questions all the time. How do I treat my leather couch? This is how you treat a leather couch. This guy had a leather couch. Here. And look at what I found. You would never believe it. We found some bed bugs. Let's check it out. Let's move our camera over so we can take a look at these things up close. This is why it's important to treat behind these back cushions, even on a leather couch, because look at the bed bugs. See him? Look at him right there. Think he's going to hide from me. Look, he's trying to run because I'm getting ready to kill him. I'm treating this couch. I'm going to take care of him and all his family. Okay, that might be a little cringe, but... Yeah. But they were living all in that crack, all along the top of that crease. In this image right here, we can see... Now look at that. There's eggs. You can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, anyway, like I was saying, this, this, is, this is... I think this is a great video. This took uh, several hours. Actually, this video right here took about three or four days to edit to get it exact because I did voiceover and everything on it but like I was saying if you go to the uh, you become a member okay it's $14.99 you join up you become a member it's not the same as subscribing I know it's confusing because there are people on Twitch uh, a lot of people on Twitch like I'm dual streaming right now people on Twitch kind of understand how members and subscriptions work like if you follow somebody on twitch it's not the same as if you give them your subscription this is the same thing with youtube so youtube started a subscription service years ago 
and this is a fourteen ninety nine. It's cheaper than Udemy, and you get it's just as good in my opinion. And it doesn't. Uh, it, it's not. I I don't know. I like it. I think it's a very easy way for me to put my courses up so people can get them easier and still get all my YouTube content and everything too. So anyway, I recommend it. It's self-promotion, but it's absolutely great information to help you uh, understand how to treat for bed bugs. Um, let's see. Uh, I am Michael. Say your name because I know what your name is. I know the, the phonics, ph phonics, phonics, phonetics, of your name because I know that book that book is about bathrooms and you are an author about bathrooms I know but anyway FYI after seeing your video we did sweep up the DE and I ordered Crossfire I'm going to apply it this weekend with the house being empty is there any chance they will go dormant they can go dormant if no one is in the house but as soon as you go back in the house, they come back and they're, they're perfectly like, oh, there's food. Like these bed bugs right here. So I've got bed bugs right here. These bed bugs. These are alive. They're alive. I think they're alive. Is it going to show them or not? There they are. Look at them. Let's see if we can wake them up. They're asleep. They're sleeping. Let's see if I can wake them up. The way you wake them up is with CO2. So, what you do is you open the lid. First, make sure they're not on the lid because sometimes they crawl up around the lid. And you breathe on them. Like that. And you put the lid on real quick because they'll start moving around in there. These might actually be dead. I don't know. They might be dead. There's like four or five of them in there. But they will. They'll lay and they'll look dead, but they're not dead. For 40 years, I thought I wanted to be an exterminator, but my skin is crawling just seeing the eggs. Oh, it's not bad. You get used to it. It deadens you. You're like, man, I can't wait. The thing is, if you look at that, you look at those eggs right there, that, I'm going to stop somebody from getting eaten up with those. I am going to help somebody. I'm going to go into their house, and I'm going to kill those bugs. See, there's actually a live one right there. I am going to kill those bugs, and they won't be able to bite that person anymore. I'm like a hero. I'm like a superhero. I am going to save the day. They called me, and I saved the day. That is just great fun. I love to do that. I love to do that. It's very, very rewarding for me to go in and help people to get good night's sleep and everything. So... You know, and I saved their couch. That's a nice couch. If you look at that, like, like, look at this couch, okay? This furniture, that is nice sofa. You know, that would be a shame to take that thing out and throw it on the curb. You look at that. There's nothing wrong with that sofa. That is a perfectly good sofa. It is com it's a, I'm sure it's comfortable. I didn't sit on it. I ain't going to take bed bugs home. But it's a perfectly comfortable couch. And so you treat it, you kill the bed bugs in the couch, and then... You cannot throw it away. So many people throw away their furniture. And this and that's another way that people get bed bugs is when you take your bed bug infested furniture and you put it on the curb and then somebody goes you takes your perfectly nice, wonderful couch, it's a leather couch, home, puts it in their house, and now it's full of bed bugs. They infested their own house. Why not save the furniture, kill the bed bugs, furniture never ends up on the curb, no one else ends up getting it. You stop the cycle right there. Because you know a guy that's walking down the road or driving down the road and he sees a nice, comfortable couch and he doesn't have money to afford a couch, he just wants a comfortable place to sit. And there is nothing wrong with him picking that couch up and taking it home. He's not doing anything wrong. The problem is, is the person that took that bed bug infested couch should have just taken it straight to the dump. You know, you take it to the dump and you throw it out in the dump, let those guys with them backhoes and bulldozers take it and put it in a big old place and just bury it. And get the bed bugs off the street. How do you discard leftover crossfire? I don't want to use it all. But if you want to discard pesticides that you don't want to use, you have to call your local Department of Agriculture. They will explain to you how to get rid of pesticide. Every state is different. Virginia has plans where you can take it and get rid of it, but I don't discard leftover crossfire. I don't have leftover. I mix what I need. 
So I don't buy, let me show you what I buy when I buy Crossfire, all right? Here, let me do this. Oh, seriously? B N F E U N. Why is it doing that? All right, Crossfire. This one. I buy this one. All right. The reason I buy this is because I'm an exterminator. I kill lots of bed bugs. People call me to their house and I kill bed bugs. So if you look at this, it's got a graduated cylinder on the side. So I don't ever mix an entire gallon. All right. When I mix a gallon of Crossfire, it's because I'm doing three or four bed bug jobs in one day, which I rarely do. Most of the time, I try to stick to just one bed bug job in a day. One is plenty of work. And so I only mix half a gallon. So I will have what? six and a half ounces that's all i need so i mix six and a half ounces and they've got the mark there on the jug so that's the way i do it i don't mix a whole gallon or i might even mix less than that you know i might mix three and a quarter gallon or whatever but the new the new jug is better than this the newer jug let me show you um there's the new jug the new jug is fantastic. So it has got, I don't know if you can actually see the new label. But anyway, it's got an actual, the, 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 the graduations are done differently. This is 13 ounces at the top. So if you mix, if you get the chemical, you pour it over in here, it fills up this little spot up to this spot here. That's 13 ounces. That's for a gallon. And you've got six and a half here, and then you've got three and a quarter here. So you can mix a quart. You don't have to mix a whole gallon. So this is fantastic. I love this. And if I mix a quart of Crossfire, and that's what I'm going to use on a job, and I need to mix more, well, then I just go out and mix more if I use it. That's I don't like to have leftover. I don't ever have leftover product. Hey, Jennifer, we ain't doing all right. Everybody so far is all right. Does cold weather kill bed bugs? No, cold weather does not kill bed bugs. Cold weather doesn't kill a lot of bugs that people think it does. People like to say, what we need is a good cold winter. Kill some of these bugs. You know what? If the really cold winter that kills some of these bugs really worked, we'd stop having bugs. Because every now and then you get a hellish cold winter. It's awful cold. Lasts forever. Feels like you're never going to get out of the cold. And as soon as it gets warm, guess what the first thing you see? Bugs, because they don't die. Cold doesn't kill bugs. Bugs survive. They survive through the cold. Cold doesn't kill bugs. So, um, for example, like cockroaches. Cockroaches will die if the temperature dips like down below the 60s or whatever. Most, most cockroaches. But what they do is they tunnel under mulch beds, or they go into a hollow tree, or they come in your house where it's warm, and they don't die because they survive. Or their eggs, or the, the adults don't, the adults die, but the eggs don't, and the eggs survive, and they hatch as soon as it gets warm. So, for a whole house treatment, does that include basements and attics? Duh, you don't treat an attic. You don't have to treat the attic. I do treat basements, but I don't treat the attic. No reason to treat the attic. Not for bed bugs. They're not going to be there. If you've got bed bugs in your attic, you don't have bed bugs, you have bat bugs. I do garages too. Should you avoid using space heaters in a treated room? You can use a space heater if you want. If it's if it's cold, you should avoid using space heaters because they're a fire hazard, not because of chemical, but they won't hurt the pesticide. Heat, it's extreme heats that hurt pesticides. Not normal, like, you know, you just want to live in your bedroom and you want to keep it warm because it's wintertime. That's, that's not going to hurt you. It won't hurt the chemical. But um, to be a little more in depth, let me see if I can find this. All right. So the Virginia Department of Agriculture has a special pesticide collection program. Okay. 
and you can actually view uh, a form. You can actually put in a form, but here's the map. So this is Virginia. This is the state I live in. So if you look at this map, you can see the areas that they are going to do pesticide disposal. So if you live, let's say, around this blue area right here, they're going to do pesticide collection in 2028. But if you've got pesticide that you need to dispose of, like quickly, like you need to get rid of it, then you can drive up here, you can bring, you can transport it up here, and they will throw it away for you. That they have a special place up here. They are actually, they have their collection program in place up here right now because it's 2024. And so if you go up around this area, you could dispose of your chemical. Um, 2025 would be like this brownish area here and over here. And then 2026 is green. Doesn't look like they have a green one. Uh, 2027 is the pale blue. And then 2028 is this one here. So those are the areas that you could go to to dispose of your pesticide. Every state does it different. This is just how Virginia does it, to be a little more precise on what to do with leftover chemicals. I've never had to dispose of chemicals. I've never had to use the plan. It's there in case I want to use it. If I had found like chloridane or something in somebody's house and they asked me if I could get rid of it, then those are the places I would go to get rid of it during the year that you, know, that you can access those areas. Uh, Brad says, bless you and your family. I uh, have to get to bed. Well, good night, Brad. I know I was late tonight. I'm sorry for being late. I'm actually getting ready to get off here myself. I got to get to bed. I got work tomorrow. I actually have to get up first thing in the morning and take my wife's van to get it inspected because it was due for inspection. And then I got to go and do a termite inspection too. So it's termite season, man. It's bug. It's a buggy year. I missed what you had to say about using a cheap one gallon garden sprayer for bed bugs. Um, so I don't recommend them. I think they're crap. But people use them all the time and they work just fine. The problem with a one gallon garden sprayer, and let's let's be specific here. Um, These, these little shitty things, excuse my language. Um, I don't recommend them because they leak, okay? And, and they're, they're hard to control and they make a mess. And half the time you get them and they don't even work. And I've done reviews on these, like the ones you buy on Amazon. But I'm working towards a new series that I'm going to do probably within the next couple months. If I can get things together, the biggest issue this time of year is I'm really busy and it's difficult. Like you've noticed, I don't make as many videos. Like if you go to my channel and you look at the videos that I make, like the last video I did, um, well, I did the bed bug series for the, that was two weeks ago. I haven't put up a new video except for the live streams in two weeks. And then before that, I was doing it every week, but then it was a month, then three months. It was three, It was two-month hiatus between those two videos. This time of year, I am swamped. I am so busy. I don't have a lot of time. Of course, this one here, this was a lot of holidays and stuff like that that fell. And I couldn't make any videos then. Uh, will you please answer my question before you leave? What is it, Abby? Is it safe to keep my child the furthest place in the house while treating? Okay, so, all right. Let's go back to this map. I want to answer this question. All right, this map right here. Let's say you've got a cat or a dog and you want to keep your pets out of the pesticide. All right, but you want to treat your old house. What I would do personally, if this was me, I have kennels for my animals. I would put the kennel in this room right here the bathroom. This is the bathroom. And that room I would not treat. I would put the animals in their kennels in this room. That way if you go in to use the bathroom you don't have to worry about the dog or the cat running out. They're in a kennel. And then wait until it's dry. Or if you've got a child or somebody and you can't leave the house. You can't leave the house. You're unable to leave the house. You should leave the house. 
That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to leave the house. But what you do is you quarantine one room. And you put your child in that room. And don't treat that room. Don't do that room at all. Wait. Wait. Okay? Do the whole house. Get your child. Go buckle them in the car. Turn the car on. Don't be leaving no kid in no hot car. And then treat that room and leave. Okay? That way the whole house gets treated. Or, or, you could just hang out in that room, watch some TV until the house dries. All right? Then freely use the rest of the house and treat this room and just lock it off until it dries in this room and do it all in one day and just break it up if you can't leave. The chemical doesn't have a toxic vapor. So that means it doesn't produce a fume that will hurt you at all. You're not going to get hurt from it. Um, but you don't want to sit on wet furniture that's been treated with it. It's not, you don't, don't do that. You know, let it dry and then re-enter the rooms. So if that answers your question, I hope that answered the question. I think it answered the question. Abby. But I always recommend taking your kids out of the house. I, I will not treat a house if a customer calls me and they tell me, hey, can you come over and treat my house for bed bugs? And they can't leave the house. Then I ask them, is there a day I can come when you can? Because I'm not going to come and treat if y'all can't leave the house. Because I treat everything. I'm not going to do this splitting up rooms and letting people move around and waiting for stuff to dry. I'm not going to do that. I, I don't live there. I've got other people that are expecting me at their house. I can't be spending all day at, at the one place. And so... Uh, I make it work to where I could go a different day. And I'd say, well, what about in the afternoon? What about, well, why don't y'all go get you some dinner at, you know, at Applebee's or something, and I'll treat the house before you leave. And then y'all can go and have dinner and have a good family night out. When you come back, everything will be dry. That kind of thing. I, yeah, I, really, I try to work around other schedules when, when I work. Pest control is really about that. When you think about it, we're a real early business. We get out real early in the morning before restaurants open for breakfast, before daycares open and stuff like that. And so we're usually up before everybody else. And we're usually home before everybody else because we start so early. The thing is, Abby, is you just don't want the kids to go gallivanting through the rest of the house if you've treated it if you see what I'm saying. You just don't want them moving through the rest of the house and and going in and jumping on the bed. My kids are hoodlums, all right? Not like they're going to jail hoodlums, but like they're, they're heathens. They're wild heathens. That's what they are. And my five-year-old, if I told him, now don't you go in your room, five minutes later he's going to be in his room jumping on the bed because that's how my five-year-old is. It's not that he does it on purpose. It's just it's out of his brain. You tell him once and he just hears, bedroom, oh, yay, and runs back jumps on the bed. So... It's one of those things where if you're going to treat the house and your kids are there, you need to just make sure you keep everything quarantined and don't let them go in there until it's dry. Okay? That's really important. Keep an eye on your kids and don't let them run all over the place. Because like I said, if I know, I know my kids. I know my kids. I know how they are. Especially Charlie. I'm thinking about Charlie. Now, Finley will sneak. He don't make a lot of racket. He sneaks off and hides and does stuff he's not supposed to do real quiet like Charlie... He's the one you hear. You're like, what was that crash? It must have been Charlie. That's how Charlie is. So, Oh, but I'm going to get on to bed. Y'all have a real great night. I appreciate it, and I will see y'all next week. Let me see if I can find some music here to play for you. And uh, I'll see y'all later. Thanks a lot.